What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm really excited to bring you my full review of the SRM Rubik. I hope I'm saying that correctly. You can let me know down in the comments if I got it wrong. What we're going to be doing today is going over knife specs, size comparisons, thoughts and impressions, and any alternative recommendations if I have them. Let's go ahead and jump into it. The Rubik has a 3.62 VG10 blade steel coated in this instance. They actually do advertise that they heat treat at 58 to 60 HRC. It has a 4.53 inch G10 handle. Total length is 8.15 inches and they are claiming that it comes in at 3.96 ounces. Let's go ahead and check that out. It feels lighter in hand, but I am curious to see if it is coming in. Yeah, so 3.96 ounces is correct. Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and move the scale out of the way and let's do some size comparisons. Let's just see how this stacks up against some knives that you might recognize. First up, we're gonna bring out the Demco AD 20.5. That's pretty close. Demco 80.20.5, a little bit smaller, but not too much. Next up, we'll bring out the Spyderco Shaman. Hopefully some of you folks are familiar with that knife there. And you'll see that the Shaman and the Rubik's are actually very comparable in sizes. Let me go ahead and bring out just a couple more. That way, if you're not familiar with these two knives or you haven't experienced them, maybe these next two will help you with that. First, we're going to bring out the Benchmade Bugout crossbar lock here and then we'll bring out the sig k320 by hogue fantastic knife i like that one a lot as you can see there the rubik oh i think i have them all crooked so sorry the rubik is actually a little bit bigger than the k320 by hogue so this is definitely a full-size knife now if you don't have either one of these i have a couple of budget knives that i'm going to bring out here for you and hopefully these might help you with the size reference first up we're going to bring out the buck 110 usa made knife for around 30 bucks you can see the buck 110 is a little bit longer and then we're going to bring out the raccoon by vasti this one here a little bit smaller than the rubik so hopefully that's helped you from a size profile. We're going to do a thickness profile too, so you can see how this will ride in the pants or how it'll feel in hand. Let's go ahead and close these up, bring them up here for a size comparison. So you can see the Rubik's has a nice thin profile. It matches that of the Vosti Raccoon. Let's go ahead and grab the AD 20.5. You can see the AD 20.5 is a little bit thinner. And then we'll go ahead and bring out the Benchmade bug out with the flatanium scales on it. And you can see there that the Rubik's just a little bit thicker, but not by much. All right, those are all the size comparisons out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump into my thoughts and impressions. So let's go ahead and start with the Ergos. This knife is very comfortable and it's not surprising at all because it's a very neutral hand design. It has a very gradual sweep down pretty straight through but it's again it's very subtle how it drops down in the back so it gets you in a nice position if you want to use that forward finger choil you can which is going to be great to ensure that you have nice grip if you have to puncture before you do any type of cutting or if you want to choke up i have actually found that i can kind of split the difference and put my finger over top of this part here and then the middle finger here in the back and i actually am in a great position for push cuts nice and control over that or i can come out to the tip really control that detail work if i need to do that as well the g10 on here is grippy but it's not going to shred the pockets you have a nice solid g10 backspacer here as well you have a very interesting pocket clip here now it does carry very nicely works very nicely it's not hot at all now because of how it's designed it does move around a little bit when it's in your hand when you're gripping the knife but i also think that's partially because of how it's designed so let's go ahead and close up the knife and talk about that this one here requires no screws what you want to do is actually close it and then you just kind of wiggle it back and forth until it comes out and you can see here it has these notches that allows you to flip it over to the other side so that you can make this reversible does seem to work pretty good i would say they probably could afford to beef it up just a little bit and they did not prioritize the pocket uh the lanyard hole over the pocket clip which i really appreciate it does have t6 um and i thought this was t8 yeah, 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 that's right. It was T8 in the pivot, so that works really well. Nice thumb studs. They don't stick up too tall over top of the scales, which I really appreciate. And they did chamfer down the scales nicely, so you can get in there 
and let it rip works really well now the studs on the lock bar are extremely comfortable they do not feel pokey at all they do have some texturing here so you can grip onto them and get them out very nicely it has a good profile good geometry fairly tall flat grind very thin behind the edge great looking blade shape I think I'm actually going to probably take this and stone wash it and get that black wash look going. I think that would look really awesome with this one here. You can see it does have way too much information going on here as far as the name, the code, the brand. And then inside here, you can see that VG10 blade steel is marked inside there as well. And then you have SRM on both sides of the knife. So I would say just dial back the branding a little bit. I like the fact that it does have a nice pivot collar here. They have the SRM in there as well. So I think you could probably just get rid of that one altogether if you wanted to leave this back here and you have that branding here, I think you're good to go. You can dial it back a little bit. I like the little mill out here that they have inside of the red part of the G10. I think that adds a nice little aesthetic to it without it being too over the top. So really good knife. Now it did come with a fantastic edge. I was really impressed by the edge and it performs really well. Now VG10, if you're not familiar, is like a kitchen grade steel. So it is very stainless, but it's not gonna hold an edge a very long time. It's gonna be very comparable to, I would say 10 CR. I think I would put it in that in that range right there. So if you're familiar with 9 CR, 10 CR is just a little bit above that. So it'll hold an edge for a little while, but it's probably not gonna be as good a performer as like a 14 C 28 N that's heat treated correctly or Nitro V or 154 cms this is going to kind of be in between like your d2s and your non crs it's going to be like your 10 cr well, actually d2 is going to hold an edge better but it's not going to be as tough as this and it's not going to be stainless like this is now having said all this what are my alternative recommendations let me first say that this is coming in at 56 bucks so this is very tough to compete with now i'm going to bring another knife out that i had a little while ago i do like this because it has 14 c28 in and it's about Fifth, uh, 62 bucks, I think is what the price point was on that, but it is a little bit smaller of a knife. If you don't like this one and you want something that's a little bit more fuller in size, another great knife is going to be the Conspirator. That's gonna get you right there at the same size. Great, 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 great knife. And I just realized I'm a little low on the screen here with these laying down. Let me move them over just a little bit. And that's not too uh, bad of a gap either because I think these are about 72, 74, 75, somewhere in there. And this is 56, 62. So kind of close, but button locks, which again are going to get you out of the blades path, but you're getting Nitro V and 14 C 28 N, which I think are a little bit better as far as steels are concerned. And that's not to say that VG10 is a bad steel. I think it's a great steel at this price point. Mm -hmm. Really, I think it is. Now, your spider codes that have VG10 on them, because you're going to see that on some of their knives when you talk about some of their lightweights, that, like your Delica, I think Delica, if I recall correctly, I think the Delica lightweight comes in at VG10 in the base model. That's going to have like a 61 to 63 range, which is going to be a little bit better than the 58 to 60. But honestly, for an EDC at this price point with an you know, an ambidextrous crossbar lock going to perform really, really well. And it's going to be really easy to maintain that edge. Now we'll do a long-term review on this one and I'll let you guys know how that's going to perform in the long term. So we'll see how that edge holds up and how easy it is to sharpen. Is it a recommendable knife? Honestly, at 56 bucks, if that's your price point, this is a great one, especially if you want a bigger knife that is going to work really well. You probably are going to be able to use Benchmade's Omega Springs here to do this as well. Now, I will do a disassembly to verify because I couldn't find any information on the pivot. It does feel like a phosphor bronze washer knife. So if it is, it's going to be very much like what you see when you get something like the bug out. Now, my bug out, you see how the action is very similar you kind of when you get those phosphor bonds you kind of want to just put a little bit of wrist into closing them because they're not truly fall shuts now unlike the bug out i have found that hogue has found a way to make their phosphor bonds fall shut but they do so with very minimal pivot play so I do have the same amount of play on that bug out as I do on this K320, but as you can see, 
the K320 is false shut action with false response washer, which is very impressive. So we'll disassemble it and verify that. So be on the lookout for that video. If you enjoyed today's video, though, do me a favor, leave a like. And if you're interested in that disassembly and don't want to miss it, make sure that you have your notification bells set to all and that you're subscribed to the channel. Thanks to everyone out there that is a regular commenter, liker, and subscriber. I appreciate you. I love you guys. I hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.